Okay then, so this form is pretty much finished now, but what we'd like to do is take all of this data, the title and the ingredients, and then send that off to our Firestore database to create a new smoothie record. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, we'll need to import the database into this add smoothie component since we're communicating with the database. So we'll say import db from, and it's at forward slash Firebase forward slash init to grab this file right here. Okay, so now we have that, we can go down to this add smoothie function, which is where we will be adding the data to the database. So we'll get rid of this console.log statement right now. We don't need that anymore. And the first thing I'd like to do is check if the user has actually created a title. I want to make sure that this thing is not null. So we'll say if this dot title. So if this is true, it means it's not null. Therefore, we can add this to the database. We'll do an else clause down here. And in the else clause, what we'll do is just provide some feedback. So we say something like you must enter a smoothie title. So we'll say this dot feedback is equal to you must enter a smoothie title like so. So that's if there's no title. If they do have a title, what we'll do is set the feedback to null. So it gets rid of that. This dot feedback is equal to null like so. Okay, so what do we want to do now? Well, we want to communicate with our database. So to do that, we'll say DB and then we want the smoothies collection. So we say dot collection and then smoothies. So now we have a reference to the smoothies collection. Now we want to add on a new record and we can very easily do that by just using the method dot add like so. This takes an object as a parameter and this object represents the record or document that we want to add to the database, to this smoothies collection. So what fields do we want to add in this document? Well, we need a title property first of all, and this is going to be this dot title. We also need the ingredients. So ingredients is going to be this dot ingredients, which we have stored up here. And we also, if you remember, need a slug and that's for our URL up here. So forward slash morning hyphen madness, for example. So we need to somehow create that slug because we don't have one yet. So first of all, let's create a slug property on the data and we'll set this equal to null to begin with. Now then, we could create some JavaScript to create this slug ourselves based on the title that the user enters, but I don't wanna waste your time creating that because it would take two or three lessons. So instead what we'll do is import a third party library. We need to install that first of all. So let's open the terminal and we'll say npm install and the package is called slugify. So I'm gonna save this as well to my dependencies. Okay then, so now we've installed that, we can go ahead and import it up here. We'll say import slugify from slugify. That's the name of the package. Cool. So now we can use it down here. Now we need to use this before we go and add this to the database. So after this dot feedback equals null, we'll just enter and we'll do a little comment saying create a slug. Right now, so the way we use this slugify package is by saying, first of all, this dot slug, that refers to this thing right here. So what I'm doing is grabbing that and I'll update it to something. We'll set it equal to slugify. And then this is a function. We need to say what we want to slugify. Well, we want to slugify the title. So we'll say this dot title, which refers to this thing right here. So this dot title, the second parameter right here is an object. And this object is gonna contain some different options as to how we want to slugify. The first option is gonna be replacement, and that's gonna be equal to a hyphen. So anytime there's a space, this thing, this function, is gonna replace it with this thing, a hyphen. Okay, so that's the first step. We also want to say remove, and this is gonna be a regular expression. Now, I'm just gonna copy and paste this regular expression in. It's nothing too complex, and I will briefly explain this. Basically, we're saying all of these characters right here, we want to remove them globally. So if anyone enters in an at symbol or a dollar sign or brackets or something like that, we don't want that to be in the slug. 
that can be in the title of the smoothie, that's fine, but not in the slug. We don't want that to be in the URL up here. So we're removing those globally, right? So then the next option we need to put in here is lower and set that to true. And this means that we want the resulting slug to be lowercase. So if there's capitals in this, it's gonna make it all lowercase. So that was pretty simple. Now we have a slug stored on this dot slug. So it's no longer null at this point. We've updated it with this thing right here. Okay, so it's gonna take the title and turn that into a slug and store it right here. So now we have that slug, we can pass it through as a value inside this object. So we'll say slug is gonna be equal to this dot slug. All right, cool. So now then that there is gonna save something to the database. Now, before we save anything, what I'd like to do is just show you this slug thing. I wanna log it to the console. So let me just comment all of this out. And by the way, to do that, I press control and then forward slash. That's a shortcut to comment a big block of code out. And what I'd like to do is console.log this.slug. So we can see what this has created for us. So let's save that and view it in a browser first of all. So if I go to smoothie title, and first of all, we need to open up the console. So let's do that. And if I say the smoothie title is Mario Madness, yeah. And then add in some of those things as well. And add an ingredient, banana, doesn't really matter. If I press add smoothie now, and we go to the console, then we can see this right here is the slug based on this. So it's taken out those exclamation marks, it's replaced the spaces with these things right here, hyphens, okay? So we have that slug. So let's remove that and uncomment all of that. So now we're saving it to the database. Now this here is an asynchronous task. It takes time to do. It returns a promise. And we know by now that a promise, we can tack on a dot then method at the end of. So inside this dot then method, we can pass through our callback function like so, and what we can do is do something after we've added this to the database. What would we like to do? Well, I'd like to redirect the user to the home page. So we can say this dot, and then dollar sign router dot push. I remember this is how we redirect someone. We learned this in the routing chapter. So we're gonna push them to a new route, and the name of that route is gonna be index. Okay. So when it's been saved to the database, then we'll push them to the home page. Now we can't tack on a catch method to catch any kind of error here. So we'll pass that through as a parameter. And then well, all we'll do is log this to the console, console.log and then the error. Okay, so if we save this now, I'm gonna try this out in a browser. So let's go here and say Mario Madness. And down here, a banana will be one of the ingredients. Um, a mushroom will be another, and peaches will be another. Okay, so if we save this now, then hopefully it's gonna do the magic behind the scenes. It's gonna save it to the database and redirect us to the homepage. So now we see that Mario Madness um, smoothie right here. So it's obviously been added to the database because we're retrieving it right here. And if we just double check and refresh over here in the database, we should see that record now has been added. If we click down here, Mario Madness, awesome. So there we go, my friends. That is how we create a slug using this Slugify package and also how we add a new record to the database.